All right, welcome back. In this video, I'll show you how to create a simple contact form using Flask. And we will then see how we can store the information that the user has entered into a CSV file. And before we start, make sure you have installed the following Python packages, which is using pip install Flask install flask underscore wtf and we are using this wt force package since it comes with a lot of useful built-in functionality for input elements and we also need to use pip install email underscore validator which is used specifically to check if the user has entered a correct email to start i have included the html and css files for the styling and for the layout of our website you can find them in the GitHub link in the description below and make sure you have them in the same folder structure where the CSS file is inside a folder called static and the index.html file is inside a folder called templates. This is how Flask expects the folder structure to be so that it knows where to look for the HTML and the CSS files. We will first start by creating our Python file. I will just name mine main.py. Within this file, I will import Flask from Flask. I will then initialize a new instance and I will pass in the name. This is so that Flask knows where to look in our directory for our other folders. Next, we want to render our template so that when the user visits the home route, they can view the content page. So to do that, I will import render template from Flask. I will then create the default home route using a Python decorator like so. And then I will declare a function. This function will just return the template that we want to use. So I'll use the render template method and I'll specify index.html as our template. Note that we do not need to use templates slash index.html since Flask will automatically look inside the templates folder. Now that we have set it up our HTML template, we need to make sure that the styles are shown correctly. I've already written all the styles necessary in the CSS file. So to connect the CSS styling within the HTML file, we need to specify the location of the CSS files within this link tag over here. We will then use the URL for method. And as the first argument, we will specify static. This is to tell Flask which folder we are looking for. And then we, need, we also need to specify the file name. In this case, we are looking for the file called styles.css. We will also need to enclose all of that within two curly braces. This is how Flask expects us to write Python expressions as within our HTML templates. We will then run our file if the file is being executed directly. And we can do that using if the name equals main. We will then use app.run and set the debug keyword argument to true. So if we check our application now, we can see that we have the basic HTML template and also note that we are not seeing any input elements since we'll be adding them later on. To create a form, I'll first create a separate Python form. I'll call this contactform.py. I will then import Flask form from Flask underscore WTF. And I'll also import from WT forms the string field. This is what we'll use to create the name input element. I'll also import the email field for the email input element, the text error field for the message input element, and lastly the submit field for the submit button. We will then need to create a class, I'll call this contact form and we will also need to inherit from a flask form. I'll then initialize all input elements. In this case, it is the name, email, message, and submit. And 
and when we are initializing all of these input fields we can also specify the label as an argument this label is what is used to tell the user what they should enter for the input so I'll go ahead and specify those as well and for the submit field this label is actually the text of the submit button and we can also specify a list of validators this is what is used to ensure that whatever the user has entered is correct and what we expect to specify which validators we want we need to import them from wtforms.validators in our case we will need the data required validator which is used to ensure that the user enters something for an input the length of validator to specify what is the maximum or minimum length of the input element as well as the email validator we can then specify the validators by initializing them within the list for the length of validators we can specify the minimum or the maximum keyword argument or both of them in my case i will specify a minimum length of 3 and a maximum length of 20 characters for the name input element and for the email validator i will use data required as well as the email validator and for the email validator you will need to have installed the email underscore validator package for it to work like i showed before and lastly for the message input element i will specify a a minimum length of three and a maximum length of eight thousand characters but you can choose whatever values you would like once that's done we can then import the contact form class within our main.py file and when we are rendering our template i will initialize a new form object and then i'll pass it to the render template method as a keyword argument this is so that we can access it within our template which i will show right after this so now within our html template we can use the form object and we will first display the name label and we can do that using form.name and then we can use the label method to display the label and we need to make sure to do that within two curly braces this is to tell flask that this is an expression i will also use the name input element which we can do using form.name and I'll do something similar for name, email, message, and submit. And if we try to run it, we can see that we run into an error. And that is because Flask expects us to use a secret token to prevent cross-site request forgery attacks. And to specify that, we can use app.config. And then we can specify the secret key to be a random string. You can make this any random string. Just make sure that it is not revealed. In my case, I'll just generate one randomly using a password generator to use it within our form we need to use form.hidden tag and it seems like i've also forgotten to use the contact class for our form and that is necessary to display the style since that is what i use within the css files but i'll make sure to correct that within the github files so if we run our application again we can see that we have all these styles and the input elements defined correctly and we have a basic contact form and if we start to use the contact form now we can see that there is already some basic input validation provided by the browser but if we enter the details correctly and try to submit the form we can see that the form is submitted but it says the method is not allowed 
and that is because the form submits the data using the post HTTP method but our home route currently only accepts the get HTTP method so to fix this we can specify the methods that we accept for this particular home route as a list we can then check if the form is valid by using an if statement and we can use the validate on submit method so if it is valid i'll just print out the form data using form.data just to show you what it outputs and if you try submitting the form now you can see that it works and the form data is represented as a dictionary as key value pairs there is also the csrf token but we can ignore that for now and now that we're able to receive the form data i will create a form underscore data csv to store that data in So once the form has been validated, I will then write to the CSV file, which you can do like so. I will use a context manager and I also specify the method to be A, which stands for pen, so that it does not override the form, but instead just adds to the current CSV file. And just to make it easier to work with CSV files, I'll import the CSV module, which is a built-in module in Python. We will then need to specify a writer variable as csv.writer and then we need to pass in the form. We will then need to use the write row method to add a new row to our csv form and it expects a list which it will use as the new row. So we'll specify the first value to be the name, the second to be the email and the last to be the message. And if we try to submit our contact form now, we can see that it does append it to our CSV file. But you might notice that if you submit multiple forms, it has a new line which you probably do not want. And the contact form is not cleared and there isn't any indication or message to tell the user that they have successfully submitted the contact form. So firstly, to remove the new line, we can specify the new line argument when we are using our context manager. In my case, I will just specify that to an empty string so that a new line will not be created. And when the user has successfully submitted the form, we will then redirect them back to the home page so that the previously entered data will not be there. And to do that, we will need to import the redirect method and we will redirect them to the home. And to do that, we will need to import the URL form method, which we can use to tell Flask which route we want to use. In this case, we want to use the home route, which is the name of the function we have here. So now everything works as expected, but I'll just add a feedback message to tell the user that the contact form has been successfully submitted. And we can specify a temporary message using the flash method from Flask, which we will also need to import. And if the form has been successfully submitted, I will use the flash method to show a message of message sent successfully. And to show the user the message within our template, we need to do it like so, which is using with messages equals get flashed messages. And we specify that within a curly brace and a percentage sign to tell Flask that this is a statement that needs to be executed rather than an expression. And essentially that means that this is not going to be something that is seen by the user, but rather something that needs to be executed. Similar to how we would do it in Python. We also need to specify when this statement ends. In this case, we need to do it using an end with block. Then we need to check if there are any messages using an if statement.
And if they are, we will loop over all the messages. And for each message, we display it using a paragraph tag like so. And we will display the message using two calibrators since that is just a value that we want to display to the user. So if we test our application now, we can see that we have a fully functional contact form that has feedback and the data is stored in our CSV file. That is all for this video. If this video has helped you or if you have enjoyed it, please consider possibly subscribing or liking this video to help my channel grow and to see more of such content.